All right, so what you should see here. All right, we're going to do something called multiple -mole conversions now. So if you actually look at this little chart that you've got in front of you here, and you should have this chart in front of you, uh, you will notice that pretty much what we did so far was just this side of it. Like you'll notice this side looks like the, the chart that we've already done. Okay, but now there's actually a little bit more specifics to it in that there's volume of A, moles of A, mass of A, particles of A, and you're like, what is A? Well, then you look at the other thing, and now there's a whole side of B, which is like an entirely different thing. You'll notice there's another moles, and there's more mass and volume and particles and all that stuff. It's a, it's a mirrored reflection of the same chart. What that means is that we're going to be doing this with more than one substance. All right, and we're going to start using chemical equations, and we're going to actually do stoichiometry now. So everything to this point was not stoichiometry. Everything to this point was basic mole conversions, empirical formula stuff, uh, you know, Avogadro's number, things like that. Like, that's not really technically stoichiometry. You just have to know all that to do stoichiometry. What we're going to do now is actual stoichiometry. If you remember the definition, where it was like the quantitative relationships between reactants and products and chemical reactions. The quantitative, the numerical relationships using chemical reactions. So, this now is going to involve chemical reactions, balancing them. I'm not going to make you balance them today. I'm just, you just have to remember what that like was, what that is. Uh, using coefficients, the mole values in our problems will no longer always be one. It, it's, it, the whole thing is going to like change. All right, so it's now it's a little bit more complicated. For some of you, it'll still be really easy, but then for some of you, this will be kind of like, nah, not a, not a, not a fun thing. So uh, let me start out by reminding you how this works. In, like we already did this, but like in really basic, simple fashion. So remember, we talked about this for a minute, where it was like, let's make our cake, and we said that we had so two eggs plus a box of sugar plus three oil blobs. Remember when we said that makes a cake, right? One cake. It was this great recipe. It was wonderful, whatever. Uh, so we said our two eggs. So we got two eggs, sugar, one sugar, and then three oil. And we know that makes one cake. We're going to start doing this for real now, but with chemicals. So if I were to say, all right, you've got, you've got seven eggs. You've got excess sugar. You've got excess oil. That means you've got more than enough of it. How many cakes am I going to get out of this? I mean, is it reasonably quick for you to just say, okay, well, I need two eggs for every cake. So I got two, four, six. I got six eggs there, seven, but, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. So we can make three cakes with one egg left over. I mean, do you, you see that relationship? Like and it's all based on the quantities that we combine with. What if on the what if on the other hand I went backwards and I said we had four cakes? How many sugars did it take to make the cakes? It took four sugars, right? Because it's one sugar for one cake. That's the ratio, right? That's all we're doing today. In the end, when we start doing this and it seems more complicated. That's awesome. I just recorded that to random people listening. That's the hallway at Crestwood. Um, here. Will you shut the door so I don't have to listen to that anymore? Um, but, but just so please remember, when we are doing this, like, and you start getting frustrated, it's the same thing as just doing simple basic cake stuff, except instead of cakes, it's like chemical reactions and non-friendly stuff, or at least stuff that you're not as comfortable with. So that's what we're going to do, all right? So all right. Let me show you a real example of how this is going to look. So I would write this part down. Like I would really write this part down. No, I'm not going to hold up. All right, so... From now on, so this is an example, and if you want, so specifics, um, these examples that I'm going to do are going to cover 
just two pages. We're going to skip a few, and I'll, I'll give more specifics in a little bit. But this will be SP42 and, I think, 47. Yeah. So this will be for SP42 and SP47. We're kind of going to mix them up a little bit, and you'll see. So initially, this is going to be called a mole-to-mole -mole problem. And I'll explain how that's going to work. But from now on, for every problem you're going to have, there's going to be a chemical reaction that goes along with it, all right? For every problem you're going to have, you're going to have a chemical reaction. Now, the wording will generally be more straightforward in that, like, it's right now, it's just going to be pretty clear and say, you know, if you have so many moles of this, how many moles of this will be produced or something like that? It'll be straightforward, but you'll have a reaction. You will also have coefficients. Now, I will simply put in the coefficient for you right now, like that's just given. In all the stuff in the packet, I don't think you have to balance. But there will be other things that I give you where you do have to balance the reactions. So we'll have to remember how to do that. And we'll review that, just not right now because this is more important. Now, it, just as a reminder, if there's nothing in front of the other two things, what number is theoretically there? One. There's a one, right? So let's really try to remember that because that's something we got to work on too. So, all right, now remember, the coefficients, and this is sort of the thing. Remember, the coefficients represent a mole ratio. They tell us, okay, so for, for every 1P4 here, how many O2s do I need? I need five. It's the same thing as our, as our egg thing. For every two eggs, we need one sugar. For every 1P4, we need five O2s. That will produce 1P4O10. That's our cake in this case. Same idea, just, you know, a little different. So the way the wording will be, it's like it can seem complicated. I want to make sure you never are bothered by the wording. So I'll start out really simple. So, I mean, I'll just actually write out like a sentence for you here. So it'll say, uh, if you react, I will say 32.7 moles of oxygen gas with excess. We'll keep them. I would write this so you, because there's a, there's a point to me showing you this question. There's some stuff in it that I want you to be aware of. Uh, oh, it's still ringing. All right, let's see who it is. Yeah. UPS. UPS. Okay. That was my wife. Hence why I had to actually answer. Okay. So, all right, if you react 32.7 moles of oxygen gas with excess P4, which is really just solid phosphorus, uh, how much P4 O10 will be produced? So, okay. Several things. That, these are the kind of questions you're going to see from now on. And to be clear, what this is going to be representing now. If you look at our little diagram, from now on, there's going to be multiple things. There's going to be an A and there's going to be a B in every problem. So, you know, there's going to be two compounds. In this case, well, there's actually three compounds mentioned, but one of them doesn't matter. So, first thing you need to take out of problems like this. If you ever see the word excess, all right, excess is code for ignore. So, so excess... Uh, sufficient, I don't know, enough, and any, any word that is something like that, where it's like you've got enough stuff, that means ignore it. So you don't care. That's just the problem's way of saying like, hey, we've got enough of this so that it, it makes sense. It's like you can't just talk about your cake recipe where you're like, hey, we've got two eggs. And then how many cakes do I get? And you're like, but what about the sugar and oil? Like, you have to account for it. So excess is code for it. It's like ignore it in the problem. Don't worry about it. So it says, uh, now, what do we know for sure? We know we have 32.7 moles of oxygen or oxygen gas, which that's, that is oxygen gas. And then it says how much P4O10 are we going to make? And it doesn't specify. It'll probably say... Maybe not how much, but how many moles. That's probably the more. Oh, open the door. 
know, some people open the door. That's probably the more practical way it'll ask because they'll start getting into specifics about, you know, like whether it's moles, mass, grams, and we're going to have to cover all of that, which we will. So, okay. Now, the actual setup for this is pretty straightforward. In this case, all we're doing, we're starting at moles of A. In this case, our A will be the oxygen, what we're beginning with. Our B will be the uh, P4O10. So all you're going to do when you go between things like this, you're going to use what we call a conversion factor, which really, this is fancy code for you simply saying the mole ratio. I would note that in my actual like thing on my, on my chart. And I would even make another note where I say it's the coefficients. So here, the coefficients from the chemical equation will be what we write, what we use to figure out the problem. Moles will no longer be 1, always. They will sometimes, but not always. Uh, and this is why, so you know how I've been like babbling on about how you have to label everything so specifically and why it's so important and why I like yell at you and like, hey, label. Like how you write your units. This is actually why. Because this is the ease, like you will get this confused. Pretty much all of you will if you don't label your stuff neatly and in an organized fashion. I'm just, I'm just saying. I've done it for a long time. So the way you're going to start with, and I'm being really dramatic and specific, and in, in, in the end it's a pretty simple problem, but like, just, just trust me. So you'll do 32.7 moles of oxygen. Just label it like that. Draw your little conversion chart. All right, and then hopefully you will remember whatever you have there, you write down in the next spot. That should not be much of an issue. And then the goal, what are we trying to get here? Moles of P4O10. So we're going to put that up on top. Straightforward, very clear. And then all you'll do, you're now going to take the coefficients from whatever it is you have in the equation and write them for each compound. So what is the coefficient for P4O10? There's nothing there, right? So we can assume it's a 1, so we're going to write 1 there. It's pretty straightforward. And yeah, and again, we're taking this, just this is going right there. I'm going to take a picture of it and put it on the website, so I want it to make sense, like where the numbers are coming from. And then for O2, what are we putting there? Five. All right, we're just going to take the five. There's a five here. So we're going to take that five. And we're going to put it right there. All right. So that's where they come from, the coefficients in the equation. No longer are the numbers always one for moles. It depends on the equation in this setup, in a mole to mole problem. Yes? So now forever, forever it's going to be that coefficient. No, not, not for this. So this is like the middle step. Okay. Oh, that's a good question. So this is the middle step. Like that's when we're doing moles to moles. Okay. But if we're doing mass to moles, if we're doing, you know, volume, cubic decimeters or particles to moles, then it's still going to be one because it'll be, we'll be using more steps. I'll, you'll see. So, okay. So we do this. And then what would you do here to solve this? 32.7 divided by five, right? Somewhere I had a calculator. Where is it? It's in front of the thing. Oh, my back hurts. I'm like an old man today. Even though I wonder, am I like an old man to you people already? Like, I don't feel like it, but I do look at me and think like... It's on the recording. So you'll do... 32.7 divided by 5 gives you 6.54 uh, moles of P4O10. Make sure you label everything there. That's not so bad. And that's your problem. That's the beginning. We got. I'm going to do about four more examples that change things and show you different ways and stuff. Well, that's the beginning. There's more. Yeah, I know. It's okay. Now, the next thing, the, the next thing that bothers people... You have to understand that the order of this doesn't matter. So, like, the way this is presented, it looks like, okay, we're going from left to right. 
and we have to like go react into the products. That doesn't matter. The the sides of stuff, like where they might be in the reaction, it doesn't make any difference. So if we were given an amount of P4O10 and asked to convert back, we could. And that's what I'm going to show you next because that really, really bugs people sometimes, and I want to make sure it doesn't bother you. So, all right, uh, let's do another equation. I'll try to do another short equation because nobody likes writing out long equations. Yeah, sure, okay. So let's do this equation. So we've got carbon disulfide plus O2 produces CO2. All right, so example number two. This is another mole-to-mole -mole problem. This is uh, for SP42. No, that was for 42 also, honestly. Every, the, the 47, is that's where it will get more complicated. <laughs> so now, let's do this. Let's say, uh, so, if, uh, if, moles of, Sulfur dioxide are produced. Are produced. So if 27.8 moles of sulfur dioxide are produced, um, are produced in a reaction. How many moles of oxygen were needed? to react. Now the wording, eh, it could be better. It'll probably be longer in the in the packet, but I'm just trying to save you some trouble. So, you'll notice in this case, there's four there's four compounds. And what I suggest you do for every single one of these problems is identify where stuff is, like what you need, what you don't need. So, first you do have to recognize what sulfur dioxide is. What is sulfur dioxide? It looks dark up on that TV. No. So, sulfur dioxide is going to be, you know, SO2. So that's 27.8 moles. That's what we're starting with in this case. So we're starting in this case 27.8. And the goal then is to figure out, like, okay, if we're starting with that, it says how many moles of oxygen are needed to react. So we're trying to figure out moles of O2. Now, the point of this is that the point of this example is that I want you to understand it doesn't matter which way you you try to solve this. Whether you go forward, backward in the reaction, the mole ratio doesn't change. Just like when we did the cake thing, whether you're starting with, you know, whether you're starting with, you know, going from eggs to cake or cakes back to sugar or eggs or whatever, the, the ratio is the same. So we're gonna treat this exactly the same. We're just gonna now also are the other two things even mentioned here? If they're not mentioned in a problem, don't worry about it. They serve no real purpose other than to just, you know, complete the equation. So you'll do 27.8 moles of sulfur dioxide. We'll write that out. The pen's not working. Right. So you're going to copy again. Whatever you put there, it's going down there every single time. Now, our goal is to figure out moles of O2. And we're going to write that up on top. And then, you know, at this point again, just coefficients. So whatever you have in front of each thing, that's what you use. So what is in front of O2? A 3, so you're going to write 3. What's in front of uh, SO2, sulfur dioxide? Two. A 2, so you just put a 2 there. Cross off those things. So you can cross those off. You'll be left with moles of O2. You do 27.8. Now remember, just make sure you can do the math. So 27.8 times 3 divided by 2. Yeah. So 
So it took us 41.7 moles of O2 to make that amount. So, and if you really think about it, that kind of makes sense. Like, it, you know, mentally, like, it's a 3 to 2 ratio there. So whatever, you know, it's about a 3 to 2. So it's, you know, you should be getting a little bit, you should be starting with more, ending with less. But that's the process for doing a mole-to-mole -mole conversion. All right, that's the process for doing a mole-to-mole -mole conversion, where you're simply converting from, you know, one mole of a quantity to another. That's like really basic stoichiometry. That's the beginning. So.